Toi fatalofa tumalo fa lo lo fa fonga nga le tinu o le tato porkola me su ingal ta ya onei yo le uma fa tasi mstasi fo yo scientisti Dr Rachel Perry from the the American Institute of Medical Research tata note for initial o porkola me fa tau ya tato ne fa malu lo to fo ye le porkola me le fa tu ya fureni ete ele o amano ta ya onei yo o le wa fa wo porkola me le moli tula ato Pokalame failing and for Britannia, Fayasina, Telio, or Tala, a Tau for in Tafo, Ilinfa and Liu. I like Tam Fay a Molitat or Pokalame Tayoni, year on a Moel Eos. Say Atom a stem with Mulia and a Tato Pokalam for Penny, a Matatano and Ta Opulator or immune system. Talofa, good morning. Welcome to Samuel Capital Radio. Dr. Rachel, it's nice to have you here in Samuel Capital on Samuel Capital Radio. Hello, Falava, and thank you very much uh, for Masanga for having me on the show today. You work with um, immune immunology, and today is an International Immunology Day. That's what, right. What do people like you do on this day? Well, um, we actually had uh, morning tea in celebration at work this morning, where we had some cake and some healthy fruit as well. But what we'd like to do mainly um, to celebrate this day is to share immunology with the public and how wonderful the immune system is. Right. So I'm happy mm. to have the opportunity to come and tell you about that today. We were supposed to do something very different today, the Is whole right? day today, and then that mm -hmm. got shifted. So that's why it's good to host you on the day. For, for <laughs> I'm glad we get a chance to celebrate together. <laughs> yes, you should have brought the food that you put I on so have, that yes. I can share, get my, <laughs> help boost my immune system. That's right. Next time I'll bring it. <laughs> All right. So um, with the, uh, this immunology day, so I guess people like yourself around the world be celebrating and share whatever they've been discovering during the year. That's Is right. Your, yeah. What happens? Yeah. The, um, there are different immunological <coughs> societies that researchers are part of, and they have events like movies or seminars and lectures um, to talk about different things and findings in immunology. And the, the theme of uh, International Immunology Day this year is vaccines, which is very topical because everybody knows now about how COVID vaccines are good and how to protect us from the disease. Some are scared of vaccine, but a lot of us embrace it to That's keep right. us safe. <laughs> I guess it, it might be a bit scary because it comes in a needle, but it's actually very good because it's what can train your immune system to help you fight off diseases. Mm. Oh, well, thank you. I think this is the first time Samuel kept to radio as a world of immunology day, and now we have to celebrate it every year. That's good. I'm glad you are. <laughs> Probably have to host it again next year. I hope to be able to have the chance to come back. <laughs> so <clears throat> now that we cover the, the theme of it, so it's vaccine. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, I know uh, Professor Graham has been talking about the American Institute working on some of that booster vaccine. Right. Hopefully something will happen by the end of the of the year. That's the plan. So what is the immune system in simple terms for our listeners? Um, sure, I guess a good analogy I like to give is that the immune system is like the defense force of your body. So kind of the army that protects you and against the enemies that might want to attack you. Mm -hmm. And the enemies are things like viruses, like COVID, some bacteria, and even cancer, which can attack you from the inside. Right. <clears throat> So you got to make sure you train your immune system, your army. That's right. Yeah, properly. you want a well-trained army so yeah. it can defend you properly. Right. And, and where is all this training happening? So the uh, immune system is everywhere in your body because it has to protect you from things that might come through your skin, from things that come in your lungs or things that come in your gut. But where the immune system comes from is in your bone marrow. It starts out with some stem cells. Um, and then the immune cells go all the way throughout your body and your blood, especially hanging out in your lymph nodes. Um, and then they're ready to, to respond to the attacks that might come. Um, and they get trained from when you're born um, constantly by seeing what's going on in the world around them. And that makes your immune system more and more intelligent or, or well prepared to um, uh, adapt if it has to be um, confronted by an, a virus or an infection. And sometimes there'll be infections like measles or COVID or flu that are a little bit too tough for the body to deal with all by themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have vaccines, which have a little part of the virus inside, not that it can infect you, but just enough that it can train the immune system to know what to look for. Um, and then you'll be well trained for when the virus actually arrives. So when you do something, a foreign body into you, then the body, your immune system will say, hey, that's not that's what right. we expect. Yeah. And then we see this guy, we'll go and attack this person. That's a very good explanation. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how it works. Well, let, let me try and talk in some more. Sure. 
ole tato pokala me pe nfa fonga mai itele yo ngana uye faya sina fanga ta ala tam faya fa fa no fie e si te mi ntata no to ele ni so fa da la utele atumta apune ole ole so ole so le fa mana to ile asuta fa ta wela to la scientist e va va aye ai mole ya fo in tato nga do tato tino e e mo va nga ye te te ena ya ya nga se nga se po fa ma e mo wita to the tattoo immune system or the fat pertain here now. It takes a lot of all the tattoo, all the pow, all the tino tangata to too low, or my ma, or meta, or lymph, or lymph nodes, or lymph nodes, be over hanging on a lay for a hard room in my ear, tattoo, vying a day for inter way, be of fitter fitter yell defense, fitter fitter ever a year tattoo tino, a more minor sing as a pupil tattoo, minor sing as. Alisi ba nga tawo le o le to ma fo po le se fa sa mo le mero le le me le to no po na ivi o ta to tino o ina alisi ba nga le tawo e te o se ma ta la o le nga o si ma ye ye ba nga se se ya ye ma to no ta to ma na ba e a fo ye e te e na ye fa ya fa ma ye mo e ta to le la e ni ta no o le so o le la to si po le fa tawo o le vaccine po fa ngo tu i tu i e pu pu e ta to ye lo a fa pena on a fire ya ye vai nga se ye la la e fa ta la no mas ma fa fa ta wi na fo ya so nei inga do nga fa sai ti si la to le fa ngo o tu i pu i pu i mo ta to ya me se le ta to e to no ta sa ngol fa ma yo le ko viti on na la e fa ye le to la nga na ai pe o si vai nga na e la ne ye fa ti ta inga fa to la to no me ta o le immune system a po le vai nga le i to no le pu i pu yo ta to ti no Alone for the England to my if I pay your tattoo vanga of the vanga out for a fitter fitter. A puyo tattoo tino my use for inga my inga sing if she am up on me or to tattoo tino. Lala pain or yellow tap and dang only two, a yellow tama e vang or virusi. A two ton or latino, ear on a mafailole and a lolitino as only to inga tangata is a liton, ear and fide eo, a foil de eo, a puipuilitino my fama in him. I think you, I had to try and recap all that so that... Um, I told you lots of things. <laughs> I had to try and retain a lot of the things <laughs> you've been saying. <laughs> um, so it's good that you describe your immune system like your defense system. I, I usually call my little army of things. Yeah. You know, uh, within that little army, they must you must have some very good soldiers and the bad soldiers, and then let's describe it that way. Yeah. So which are your good soldiers? And, you know, is it blood cells or what type of things do you describe as your... Exactly. So if you wanted to continue the analogy, the defense yeah. force of our body are our white blood cells. Yeah. And there's lots of different divisions within the white blood cells. So some of them are like the basic ground forces. They just had basic training. And whenever there's a war, you send them out to fight. Yeah. And they, they just point their gun and they fight. And they don't really know too much about what's happening mm. um, with the invaders. And then you have your special forces. And we call that the adaptive immune response. And those right. are the more highly trained cells that have kind of specialized jobs. Mm. And the main players there are B cells and T cells. And we hear a bit about B cells when we talk about COVID vaccines, because right. those are the cells that make our antibodies that protect us. Right. And T cells are very important in my field, which is cancer research, right. because T cells can kill things like invading viruses, but also they can kill cancer cells. Can kill, okay. So you've got adaptive, what's the other word? Uh, the innate immunity, they're kind of like our ground troops, just the basic training. Oh, but that's where you've seen all this uh, front line. If yeah. they die, they die. But <laughs> I was just trying to think about how the analogy that we're using here. Do any of our cells that got sent out the front line get killed off by the bacteria? Um, they can get killed, yes. So mm. viruses or bacteria can infect our um, right. skin cells, our lung cells, but they can also inf infect our immune cells sometimes. Mm. And that can be an extra warning to the rest of the immune system that they have to step up the response, mm. send more troops. So the minute some foreign, uh, whether it's a virus or bacteria coming to the body, the body's already programmed to recognize there's something foreign body inside. And that's right. Let's all get around and do something. Yeah. <laughs> so <that's laughs> Okay, so, so if your immune system or your army is not quite active and not, that's when you get really sick. That's right. If your body's healthy, your immune system's more likely to be healthy. Right. And if you're not eating well, exercising lots and getting all your recommended vaccines, then your body won't be in top shape and neither will your immune system. Mm. Okay. 
So we try not to describe how the immune system works. And then where does it reside? Where does all this immune system you start talking about the parts of the body that Right. I, I kind of said that holds. it's it's everywhere because it has to be patrolling the whole body to make sure right. that if there's a virus or a bacteria it can see it as soon as it arrives. Right. But most of your immune cells will live in your lymph nodes and in your spleen, and that's what we call the lymphoid or immune organs. So your lymph nodes and your tonsils and all those kind of things that get inflamed when you have an infection, that's because mm. your immune system is getting activated there. Mm. Does that, uh, when somebody's in stress, like uh, some people go through some stressful periods and then they say, oh, they start swelling them. That's right. Often because when you're stressed, that means your body's not completely healthy and that means your immune system might be a little bit mm. weak and, and not full of energy. And so you might get a little infection like a cold or some sort of virus that you don't even mm. notice, but your immune system notices it, and that's why your lymph nodes swell up because it's fighting it. I think I'm just, uh, we're, talk we're talking about lymph nodes and all this. We probably need a, a whiteboard exercise <laughs> to say, this is what we're trying to talk about and say where your lymph nodes are in the body so that people can see what we... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, most it's, people notice these lymph nodes here in their neck right. because those are the ones that often swell up. If you've got an infection yeah. in your lungs or and where else do you have breathing. a lymph nodes? You have and them under your arms, arms and your like near your legs. Actually, everywhere they have to be able to let the immune system patrol all the different parts of your body. So it's almost like your defense network. That's right. Yeah. And, and they're, they're trying to keep an eye on part, various parts of your body. Just manage. You look after that region, and I look after this side. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's quite important then that we make sure that whatever is in there, it's kept healthy. That's right, yes. Keep your body healthy so your mm. immune system is healthy too. So how do I know my lymph nodes and my whatever is in there is healthy? Do I, is there a test that I can go yeah. and do to find <laughs> out how it is? It's kind of hard to test the whole immune system in one go because it's got so many different divisions of cells and they all are kind of different. Right. Um, but the simplest test that, that a doctor can do to look at how your immune system is doing is what we call a white blood cell count. So right. it's a blood test that your doctor might order if you're not feeling well. Um, and it just counts the different type of white, white blood cells. So those innate ones that I said were like the ground forces yeah. and then the adaptive special forces, the B and T cells. And we know what the normal number is. And so we can count the ones in your blood and see if they're at a normal number or not. So what is the normal number for? Uh, I don't know them all off okay. the top of your head, but the doctor has some okay. like, you know, brackets. It's mm. from 100 to 200 or something So like I need that. to find out my normal number and then work out whether I'm at par or whether I'm above. Do I <laughs> yeah, there's a normal number for everyone. Right. And then the doctor would count your cells uh, and see, do they match the normal number or not? I'd love to and find there's, out. And there's a bit of a range. So it's not like one certain number. It's like a mm. little bracket. Yeah. I'm going to challenge my team, make sure that we go and get what our normal number is to see whether you're sitting at bar or whether you're below and then do something to get right. to that level. If you're feeling pretty healthy, that probably means your immune system numbers are normal though. Right. I haven't been sick for a while. That's a good sign. <laughs> and I also sort of uh, thank God for that. I don't think my limbs and <laughs> my, my it all, all works together to protect you, I think. Right. So, Ulvanga le matata no ne mo fa fa nganga le tunu o le tau fa ma mulama ye vaeng o le tino o lo ye ya pui pui nga yo ta to le sa ta o e si vaeng le o le spleen o lymph nodes le ta no ai mo ila lo ta to ao ao tu lo fa fa nganga le tunu mala lo lo i lunga lo fa fa i la lo lo ala fa u mo vaeng o ta to tono le tino i ve ye ya vae. Olo o ye 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 vaenga ye pisi taula inga o o na o fo yo vaenga le tino e ye ye vaenga ye va ye ta to pui pui ta to ai fa langa langa le le white blood cell po o vaenga yo le toto cella lang pa pa o ina pe o de ye le nu mera ta o na mo o mo o e la ba tanga ta to ta na lo e na a to to a pe ye le le fa ta mo ta na ye mo ta to e mo o le ma lo si ato to tangata ato mo ta to fa fo anga ta wala na lu va il fo ma i va i pole ale le a fo le fa ta ngo o le plat sel ya i ne lo ele i po o yai o le me ta no yai ale i ne va ile pole si swing a ta no fa 
So if you end up with somebody ends up with a low blood cell count, uh, the white one, what do they normally do? What does the doctor, do you know what they tell them to do to improve that or to bring it up? Um, well, so usually that's a sign that something's going wrong with right. your immune system. So if the white blood cell count is high, that probably means there's an infection. And if the white blood cell count is low, that might mean there's some sort of immune deficiency. And so oh. then the doctor would do more tests because right. you can't just find out everything from one test. That would just be the first step. Mm. Um, and then depending if your count is high or low, the doctor knows what other tests to do. And then you might need some antibiotics if you've got a bacterial infection, or you might need to take some particular vitamins if your immune system is a bit depressed in, in one area. Right. I've always wondered if there was something that I can easily test myself every day and say, tell me what part of me is not quite 100%. <laughs> I don't so. think we have um, <laughs> any tests like that. The only one that I know of is the, the rat test at the moment where you can test if you've got COVID oh, or not. Right. <laughs> so they, they're testing for the things you don't want to test about. You just test for the positive things in the body so that you know you can keep that up to date all the time. That's true. But as I said, <laughs> our immune system is very closely linked to how we feel. So if we're feeling really healthy, we mm. don't have to worry too much about our immune system because that means it's in a good state. Yeah. <laughs> And if I may, I fall along with my own after I loyally at all to an abilese yakil for my, you know, maybe a little antibiotics. I live in Tanoe, a policy for our way in a tattoo. And for if so, so on the Now, this is the question I put in here because I thought, is the immune system of a Polynesian person like me, mm -hmm. color skin, compared with European from Europe? Uh, different environment, different solo seating, are we all the same or are they different? Well, we're actually all different. So even oh. in our own family, you're not having the same immune system as your sister or your brother or your mother or your aunt. Everyone's um, immune system is unique. Um, and the reason for that is that we need that diversity to have good herd immunity against lots of different viruses and bacteria. Oh. So if one person's immune system is not good at fighting against COVID, the person next to you might have a good immune system for that and that helps us keep from right. uh, having disease spreading all the time. But everyone's immune system is very similar. So a Polynesian's immune system is very similar to everybody else's. Um, they're all just as good as each other. And in fact, the Mulligan Institute recently did a research study um, to look at how mm. everybody in New Zealand responds to the Pfizer-BioNTech yes, COVID vaccine. Yes. And they found that Māori and Polynesians and uh, other um, people from New Zealand all had very good response. Everyone had oh. really good response, no matter who they are. So that was a good outcome of that it research. Was a good outcome, yeah. yeah, oh good. Because mm -hmm. I always wondered, you know, if there's some. Because they, they talk about um, uh, melanoma, you right? Know, sort of. In fact, we were exposed to the sun in Samoa before we came out here. Yeah. How did anybody get to melanoma? <laughs> so we used to it. And then you have some people from uh, Europe countries where there's sunshine and then they come here and all of a sudden, That's true. All, of a sudden all the kids at school got told you've got to put on the cream, including <laughs> Pacific kids. There's two good reasons for that. One is that the lighter your skin, the more chance the, the sun can get into it and cause melanoma. Right. Um, and the other reason is now in New Zealand, we have this big ozone hole um, that's letting the sun's rays in a little bit more strongly. And so melanoma can come from that, whether your skin is light or dark, but right. you're more uh, risk if you've got light colored skin. So what part of the immune system helped to counter the sunlight, you know, to prevent, prevent us getting melanoma? Right. So, well, um, there are immune cells. Melanoma is a cancer that comes from when one of your normal cells in your skin mm. gets some mistakes or errors in its DNA and then it, it mutates and, and stops being controlled and just becomes a cancer that grows um, without being checked. And the immune system um, can help by every time it sees a cell that has a mistake or an error, it can kill that cell, those killer T cells that I mentioned, um, before mm. it has a chance to grow into a cancer. And every now and then the cancer just is too sneaky and grows before the T cells mm. can get it. And that's when you need my research, which is doing cancer immune therapy or training the immune system how to recognize cancer. Mm. So how do you intervene you know, the researcher, what do you do to, you know, trick or yep. get the thing to tune it or to fine tune it to behave in a way that we want it to behave? Yeah, so um, we, I can use vaccines as an analogy. Yes. When you want to train the immune system against a virus, you give them a vaccine which has a little 
bit of the virus in it to train the immune system how to recognize it and that works really well but when you have cancer you can't tell who's going to get cancer in advance so we can't give an anti-cancer vaccine before the cancer arrives we have to treat the patient once they already have the cancer and so we've found a clever way to do that which is um, instead of giving a vaccine we take the immune cells out we take a blood donation from somebody with cancer and then we train their immune cells by giving them a gene or a new uh, receptor we call that a CAR or a chimeric antigen receptor and that just main, means that it's sort of a claw that T cell can use to grab onto the cancer mm. cell and then it will know that it can kill it and so we do that all in the laboratory um, making what we call these CAR T cells and then we inject them back into the patient. So it was the patient's own immune cells. We take them out and we train them by giving them this CAR receptor. And then we inject them back in an IV um, mm. and they should know how to go and find the cancer and <coughs> kill it. I'm just thinking while you're talking all these things, you know, you're you probably sleep at night and see all these things grabbing things in front of your eyes <laughs> <laughs> as part of the research and how the things behave inside them. Let me try and cover that. Sure. It's all these... Um, <coughs> um, I <laughs> So we mentioned where you find all your immune system and we discussed that. The importance of your stomach, your cut in, in all this, you know, um, we had a program before and then we said sometimes you describe a person as brain dead and yet they still are breathing so obviously something else is happening inside the body sure so the body um, has got so many different complex things going on that mm. when we're studying the immune system we can't study it all by itself it's also linked to things like our, right. our mental well-being and what's going on in our gut or intestines and what we've been discovering in the last uh, decade or so a bit longer um, as immunologists is that what you eat affects the bacteria or the microbes that live in your gut and mm. those microbes um, have a, uh, an effect on the immune system as well so mm. if we have a healthy diet with lots of fiber that seems to feed our gut microbes um, which are our friends they live there uh, together with us and then the gut microbes uh, make some chemicals that can affect the immune system and so if we feed our gut microbes and ourselves the right food then they will give the immune system the right chemicals to have a nice healthy body. Do we have names for good microbes? They, they have a lot of different names. Um, things called lactobacilli and acetobacter and, and, and bacteria names. But we don't know actually which are the best ones yet. People are still doing research. Um, mm. What are the best microbes and how do we best feed them so that they give us a good outcome? If we can only find out which are the best one in like myself and they clone it so you only have those good ones inside you yeah that's uh, what we hope to be able to do in the future but it's very complicated because there's hundreds of different ones <laughs> and sometimes there's not just one good one there's three mm. that have to work together mm. and one that has to not be there and it's all very complex so there's and plenty I, of work for and, us and to i do. guess with all the foreign things that you put inside you you can't just train one to look after all of that's right the yeah. different food that we take in and the drinks that we take in and all the mm -hmm. other stuff that's right yeah oh. it's a, a fine balance and we haven't quite figured it out um, but we're still working on it okay thank you we'll take a little break here we'll ask you for to play a piece of music and we'll come back and we'll do the second up but thank you for that you're welcome to let you know my doctor Piri 
uh, Rachel Perry, Matel Tanoa, to my American Institute of Medical Research, Tanoa for the immune system, only all of that, the immune system in the Lalolangi, you know, the Lofi Fide, so if I help Polkalamine, Tanoa in here. If I hang on a Pioleta or the defense system or Tato, or the Tato, we bring a little Tato, if I hang a CEO Latino. Um, so I, I asked the question before, how do I know this? I'm behind my immune system is performing at its optimum. Um, no way that you know it's over 90% or below. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's when I'm feeling a bit down, then I might say, oh, the immune system is not functioning well today. Yeah, that's probably a good sign. <laughs> well, it's a bad sign, but it's yes, a way to tell yeah. if your immune system is doing yeah. a good job or not. And if I feel that way, what do I do then to actually burp me up again and get quickly get back to my normal? <laughs> right. Well, you should get lots of rest because yeah. your immune system needs energy. And if your body doesn't have enough energy, then your immune system won't have any either. You should make sure you're eating lots of healthy things, doing some exercise. Um, and if you're feeling really sick and it doesn't get better, then that's when you should go and talk to your doctor who can do lots more tests to find out what's going on. We we have uh, sometimes discussed uh, the issues with Pacific, and they say some kind go see the doctor because of either transport or the affordability. But I think when you come to your health, you should always try and find a way to get yourself better again. That's Otherwise, right. you're allowing yourself to go down a path where it probably be hard to recover from. Yeah, it's very important to take care of your health, mm. and I understand it can be hard to get transport to the doctor so a good thing would mm. be to first call Healthline yes. and see if they can give you some advice and then yeah stay as healthy as possible because if you have one infection or you're not feeling healthy in one way the next time another virus or a bacteria comes then you'll be even less able to fight mm. it off well. Right <clears throat> can we just take a simple uh, example of how the immune system works? I cut my finger mm -hmm. and what happens inside the Right, so um, there'll be a hole in your finger, obviously, yeah, with yeah, some blood, yeah. and the immune systems will be there in the blood and like crawling out of your skin to the hole, and they start to um, send out some communications or chemical signals that call other immune cells there, right. um, and they'll start to look out for if any viruses or bacteria came into the hole, and at the same time, they'll start to try and repair the hole. So the immune system's got, as I said, very many different divisions in your army, and some of them are in, in charge of defending, and some of them are in charge of um, building, like rebuilding the skin, so it's uh, not uh, creating so, a, a So whereabouts in the body is getting all this? Somebody's got to supervise all these things happening. So <laughs> where, where's, this, where's that happening inside our body? I, I guess it's uh, probably in your glands or your lymph nodes right. is where <clears> most <throat> of the immune cells hang out. And I guess that's where the specialized forces are. And mm. so when um, the infantry are in your skin trying to deal with a hole in your finger and they've realized that it's not enough, they need some extra help, then some more cells will come from kind of lymph node headquarters and, mm. and come and join them. Ole vaingale matano e le nga yoingo tato tino mai ma eu fo i le fo fanga le li i mo tato e pe o na tau mo mai i tano nga i le i le fausang o tanga ta e e e se umatato I ovaenga yen tala nol poka la me ovaenga te nol tino tanga te e mawa iya fso swani ma mawa iya vaenga iya la vea iu tato pe a ol te mi e mawa iya tato se fa mai le la no fsi dine e se fa te te inga fa ngofi a te uwa la vea lo te lima o le ali le tulanga yai le inga yu inga le immune system yo le ina i te fa mal malama i yai a e tu polo se fa la fa pe e loa le tino ya vaenga e te uwa na tu lima iya va iya le fa fita uli dia. Elengata ile pui pui imo ile siyama yo o tutu tonu. Ae tonga fiti ima le manu alea. Olona winga e te le ale nga we inga olo tupu tonu tato tino pe a yese fa ama ipo o lo fia fo tato o si siyama. Le la nu sidi, o iba tangata na te vae tonga vae nga tonu tino e va aye po o yese na te fo e fa fu fuanga ya ye tu la inga yo inga ya. Emba yo umana ilo e tato tino le nga lue nga vae nga se ese fa ili temidea. If it's all that yellow to yeah, my what yellow to long and it's at all. My yellow vinyl and that way, you put your lip on a micro micro, which was a micro. A vinyl tone or tattoo manava or in a little in a vinyl, if so, so on a fourth one of my year vinyl, we put it at all. Yet we see land of city paying you more if I know a vinyl yet at a low vinyl later on a tongue fight at all if for a four year. It tells you the lame in a yama, lossy to what you know tattoo. 
ya aye ngo fa scientist ye na mesi tau sa ini muli muli nta tau voi le sport kalami ai ma ne pa ini ngo fo ifa ngo ita to ma la ma thank you for 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 that so how can i strengthen my immune system you gave a wrist is quite important that's right exercise and eating well eating well and getting all your recommended vaccinations so they can train your immune system and get some of those tough um bugs so when you get vaccination it actually help your immune system that's does, that's the yeah. purpose of the vaccine uh so you already got your own self uh protection but the purpose for the immune system is to help trigger off that particular that's right so day to day your immune system is constantly defending you against things that are trying to infect your body mm -hmm. and it does a pretty good job at stopping them but some diseases like measles and flu and covid-19 can be a mm. bit too strong or a bit too tough for the immune system to deal with all mm. by itself and so that's why we give a vaccine as kind of an extra boost or an extra training um mm. session for the immune system when when we discuss the covid here you know then you had the very vari the variant like mm -hmm. uh, delta and then omicron and you got the ba or whatever this yeah. if only our immune system are smart enough to predict they they got to have this variation coming and said okay we can actually help defend ourselves by but yeah. that, that's where the vaccine comes in. That's right. Our immune system is very fast, and most of the time it can find new variants. Right. But every now and then, one variant's too sneaky or too different, and that's why the vaccines can help us. Mm. And and the virus is very sneaky; it tries to avoid the vaccines as well. Um. So we're always doing research to try and find new vaccines. So when there's new variants, there'll be also new vaccines mm. that will help. So your immune system, when you get injected with the vaccine, what does the immune system inside? Do to that say that's a foreign move. What do right. we do here? So how does that work? <laughs> yeah, I guess um, the vaccine usually goes into your arm, mm. um, and then there's a lymph node just under your arm, and then there's a whole bunch of other lymph nodes yeah. and, and glands nearby. Um, and so some of the vaccine might sort of float into the blood and lymphatics and go to the lymph nodes, or some of the immune cells might come out of the lymph nodes and go to where the vaccine got injected. Right. And it'll sort of be like um, a training session where all the soldiers are in a room and they're told this is the bad virus, this is how mm. you can attack it, and they learn how to defend you against that. Right. Let me explain this. Very important why people should get vaccinated. Ole vainga leta no ne leta o ole vainga ole tui pui pui. It's a tonal tattoo, tino pena ye tattoo, vainga ye fita fita ye tonal tino pui pui tattoo, my ingassing assay, my mate to pui a tattoo. A lot of time of fire, a fine eyed wing, I've a pui pui tattoo, a yellow time of my yolenta or a pay or the measles, a pay or the coviti, a pay or my own my tamina, or la la tom fire, or the two yede about to tonal tattoo tino. In that year tattoo, if I appear the folding or the virus, the pairs of yaoi. My fight is to tap in anger, but I own my tone or tino. To say I don't know how I don't know little voice at Walfa Fango fear from Tala here, my anger. Fido tattoo to inner fat or Latona and me if I pay to let him. To a law, yeah, so my role, your vine as a solitino, but he chilo up your own or many as a widow's. Yeah, in a lippy or the same on two put tono tino, no fido little turn long of vine as a seal tattoo. Polar me fide it to inga. Vangale water to Tino. I only tell me what to Alessi am a moony. We know I like to only make town of a yak. I don't know men are later for him or to in a year. I want to tattoo fit a fit or the folding a little tongue at a lap at what you turn or may I to a fight. So it's almost like uh, I'm just trying to describe that how the body reacts to that. So when we get this uh, vaccine, we had first dose. That's the first introduction in the body's uh, immune system was start saying, hey, what's that? Yeah. and they get used to it. So when they saw the second dose, they already are familiar with it. So... The virus calling me is just... <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and then you have your second dose, and then you have your booster shot. That's right. So by the third the time you have your booster shot, your body should have been prepared to look after for the actual virus coming inside you are is that yeah how th it works? there's a couple of reasons why we have that so we have the two initial doses of the vaccine mm. because the the first dose is kind of like your first class learning yeah. about the virus but you can't earn, learn everything at once so then you have your mm. second dose or your second training class 
And then at that point, your body should be well prepared. Your immune system knows how to fight the virus right. and it's all ready to go. But then after maybe three or four months, it might start forgetting because it's been a long time since it had its training. And so when you get the booster, that's like an extra training class to remind the immune system what it's supposed to do, what its job is. Our body should design some parts that says you specialize on looking for these foreign matters when you come, don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> Just like us, the immune system is not perfect, more. so sometimes it forgets when it's busy doing other things. So if the more of these foreign bodies that come, or virus or mm -hmm. bacteria, and if we're not used to it, or the immune system, we need to somehow come up for protection. That's and right. that's where your research come in. Sure. How do we tune our um, immune system? Or if this comes, we need to prepare ourselves for whatever adaptive to, to look after mm -hmm. these things. Yeah, so the Maligan Institute is doing lots of different research all mm. related to the immune system. Some of the things are just how do we understand different immune cells, mm. and some of it is how do we use that knowledge to treat or cure diseases, or maybe we might want to even present, prevent some things. When we have allergy and asthma, that's when the immune system shouldn't be reacting, but it makes a mistake and it, uh, and it reacts right. against allergens. So maybe we can train it not to do that. And when we have cancer, sometimes the immune system should be responding, but it didn't notice that the cancer was there. And so we have to train it to get activated. So lots of different research that we're doing. So what part of the research are you very fond of? I am very fond of training the immune system how to fight cancer. Okay. <laughs> so, and the cancer, there's various parts of your body that get cancer. I think for Pacific, usually lung cancer is quite high for some of our previous programs. Yeah. And then obviously you've got your breast cancer. We've done programs about that. Mm -hmm. um, so which particular cancer are you looking at? Blood yep. or any of We're, we're looking at cancer in the blood because um, that's the easiest place to start because the immune system's in the blood. Mm. And if a cancer is in the blood, then you can train the immune system, put it back in the blood and it will find the cancer easily to be able to kill it. Right. We want to one day be able to cure all the cancers. Um, but we have to do it one at a time and once mm. we've like mastered treating cancer in the blood then we can move on to treating cancer in the lungs or the breast or um, the prostate somewhere that's a bit more hidden from the immune system because mm. it's what we call a solid tumor where it's like hiding in one of your tissues kind of in a, in a protective wall that the cancer builds mm. and then the immune system has a tougher time getting in. Do you share research or do you collaborate with other research around the world? Yeah, we do, definitely. Oh, That's oh, very right. important. Mm. So um, I was just thinking with some of the research that's been going on for years and then people are asking, so it's costing a lot of money, we're not even seeing a result. Yeah. How do you actually good milestones say we must get to this point at this time or do you do a, a, like something like that or? We, we kind of do. So there's two different things. Most of our research has to get paid for by research grants, we call them, yes. where we write an application and um, some scientists evaluate it and decide if it's a good project or not. And in that application, we'll have said we are going to take two years to okay. find the answer to this research. Right. And so we have to try and stick to that deadline. Um, and then we're also going, when we're allowed to travel to other countries, we go to international conferences to talk to imme other immunologists, learn about their research, right. and maybe that will give us some ideas about how to improve our research mm. and vice versa. Are they protective of their findings or do are they really openly share? How do, how do you very protective. the researchers uh, behave? Yeah, we're very protective of our findings when we haven't finished the experiments yet because right. we want to be the, well, the one to find the answer. Yeah. But as soon as we have the answer, then we want to share it with everybody, um, both because we're proud of the research and because we know that if everybody shares their results, we'll get to the answers faster and we'll, we'll have cures for more diseases in a quicker time frame. Mm. So have you been involved in a team where you've discovered something? <laughs> we all, all always discover something. Whether or not we discover something that is the cure for a disease is a much more difficult question because mm. often it's lots of little tiny steps sure. where each person discovers a small part of the puzzle mm. and then all those parts get together um, to, to, to make the full answer. Mm. But I'm pretty excited to be working at the Maligan Institute on cancer therapy right now because we also have a clinical trial that I think Dr. Robert Weinkov has talked about on your show right, before right. Yeah. Um, where we're treating the patients with a, a cure that came from, or a treatment, I should say, that came from our research in the lab. 
Oh, very good. That's a good plus. Um, and I think uh, Malikan is using, uh, sorry, working on a booster vaccine. That's know, right, towards yeah. the end of the year, hopefully something will come out. <laughs> we should talk about vaccines because it's the theme of International Immunology yeah. Day today. And the Malikan is doing lots of different research on vaccines. Some of it is to make a, a better or a new COVID booster that might hopefully address some of the more emerging right. COVID strains. And some of the research is to how to find a way to make vaccines work better in the part of the body that they, they need to be in. So for example, COVID and flu, they come into your lungs. So we want to try and train the immune system to have immune cells in the lungs so they're ready to go. Because when you have a vaccine in your arm, maybe the immune system might have a tough time knowing that it's supposed to go to the lungs yes. and that's where the virus might come. Yeah. And then we I've have- I've always wondered, that. why do they always put it in the arm. Sometimes you put it in your... <laughs> they do. Both of those places have um, some lymph nodes cro close by so right. that the vaccine will be able to get to the immune system really easily. Mm -hmm. And with the vaccines, uh, this is so many diseases and they, they've been trying to do something for the uh, tuberculosis, That's I understand, right, yeah. in so many years and they're still doing research. So hopefully your, your, your research will actually come up with something that's quite quickly be given out to all our populations here. Yeah, I think so. So it sounds like the COVID booster this year, we're hoping that it'll be ready to go. Yes. And um, we've got lots of other research ongoing mm. too. And the other thing, uh, I was just wondering, with the Pfizer vaccine and the way it's actually prepared and given out, you know, mm -hmm. with the, min is it minus 70 degrees? That's right, yes. It's not very good for Pacific, we're so hot. That's hot true. And I <laughs> so, wonder why it was designed to be that. Uh, well, I guess because the traditional way of making vaccines where they can just be kept in the fridge or maybe not even in the fridge, it's a really long and expensive process right, to make that. Right. And making the mRNA vaccines was a lot quicker and were able to make large amounts really easily and for less money. So that was really good to get lots of vaccine doses right. out into the world. And researchers mm. never stop working. So they're still coming up with new ideas to make vaccines that don't have to be kept at minus mm. 70 degrees anymore in the future. Excuse me, I'll just talk about it. I'll 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 talk about it. I susu enga lo fa ye ne ina ia o tu fa ingol tau sanga tu nu wei se tato pusa vaksin u fa ne New Zealand. Mai fa ma fa i fo ne ngad wengal tato ti no ta wole tu mo mua a matan fa ma saniel tato vaingal eta ole immune system fa pirtania tato fita fita be o fo tanga talia va i pola le fa ingol pui pui ngol tato ratu lo tu ilong lo mo ma sania tu ilong tu ye wei lo me tau ne fa be o vaingal na wa tu ye tu ye tu tu no e fiso sani tato Fita fita ito no na ia mala mala ma le toa inga ma i le pe ao o so fa ia tato i le ele koviti. O le su su inga fo lai pe on tala noa ia le olo fa ma fa la to ma inga le bue fa ta si ma isi tangata su su e fo le la lo langi. I fa so e e to ma yo mo wa nei ma ye le ava noa fia wa e la to ma tala noa i si fo i fa la pe to ngo fa su su inga fa sa ini si. I na ia fa so le poto mo to ma i a wa i fa inga fa i unga ma Thank you for that. Uh, I think uh, I'm just easily getting my head around now. I want to describe it so that I can easily talk about the immune system. Um, in your work, what do you just describe how you do your research? Do you sit in front of a microscope or how do you do your <coughs> words when you, when you get to work? Um, <clears throat> well, I do my work generally sitting in my office researching things on the computer and having meetings oh. with the researchers oh, right. in my team now. But what they're doing is they're going into the laboratory and they're using what we call tissue culture dishes or it's like a test tube where they put immune cells um, together and they look at what their reactions are. So what we usually do because we're making our anti-cancer T-cells is we mix some of these anti-cancer CAR T-cells in a test tube with some cancer cells, and we have a look, are those um, immune cells killing the cancer the way we want to, well, the way we want them mm. to. And when you look at, so obviously under a microscope, do you actually see the killing happen? We can, actually, we have <laughs> a microscope 
um, that's like a video microscope and it yeah. can also see fluorescent or glow in the dark colors uh -huh. and so we have uh, Yasmin Nori who's one of our PhD students mixes the cancer cells and the CAR T cells together and puts them under this video microscope and she can watch them um, well not live but the yes, camera records yeah. it for three or seven days and then we can speed up the footage and we can see the immune cells killing the cancer which is pretty mm. exciting to see. Yeah I was going to say everybody get jump up and down when they see <laughs> things happening. Oh. Yeah. So if nothing happens you get really sad. That's right. <laughs> if, if nothing happens then we do the next experiment and, and we hope that one will work better. Uh, all right so where are you with the research you're doing now? Are you <laughs> seeing the end of the tunnel or planning <laughs> to see something or? Uh, the tunnel is very long, <laughs> but we, we're constantly seeing light um, little sort of branches out. So yes, yes. we are um, having a really good clinical trial now to treat blood cancer. And we're starting some new research projects in the lab um, that will treat some other blood cancers. And if that works well, then we're ready to move on to some solid cancers like maybe mm. lung or breast um, in the future. So it's uh, never the end of the journey, but at different steps along the way, there's reasons to celebrate when things are working mm. well. I hope you'll get the result before I even get one of these bad. <laughs> I hope so. We're working so, as fast so as we can. I can have a treatment for. <laughs> no, no. Thank you very much for your time this morning. It's, it's a pleasure sharing. Uh, you know, having you hosting you and sharing this information. I think, like I, I said to you before, part of what we do with these programs try and inform and educate our community. Uh, and when we start off the health program, it's just raising awareness, mm -hmm. and then we start telling them to remind them about their medical appointments and all. But now we need to tell them, so if they have the information, we empower them with the right information, then they'll be able to make informed decisions how to look after themselves and stay healthy. And meantime, we pray for you to make sure you come up with a solution at the <laughs> other end in case we get sick. <laughs> that sounds like a very good plan. I hope we can keep working together to protect the community. Yeah, so all the best for your research. Ole, tato por kalamina pe una tanonomne for fingo nato research. Eo <laughs> I pay a lot for my father, the American Institute, the town, the solid total, the issue is so angry for ye. The Malfat no no way, the East two years, the fat pay fight for him, or Tau Sangade, the Malcoviti. The other for Ilai, or Tato Polkalamin, and fight to Fatasi, Moses have not to turn no termine, yeah, to fast before.